Cancer, welcome to your 2022 annual reading. And for those of you who don't know the drill, I gotta say it, it's a general reading, right? Only, only a private reading would give you something specific to you, and that would give you the greatest accuracy and the greatest detail specific to you. So take what applies, discard what doesn't, right? And um, make sure to watch your moon um, sign, your sun and your rising, and probably most gonna resonate with Cancer risings, all right? But those of you who are like Cancer sun will probably get a lot out of it. If you don't know what your rising is, go to a you know free website where you get a free natal chart um, and find that out. A place like astro.com or Cafe Astrology or my personal favorite, wow. My personal favorite is Astro Matrix. A um, lot of cards already talking. Interesting because I just did Aries and they got the same, you know, energy of emotional disconnect. Um, that was mainly for their love life, but we'll see, you know, what this is about for you. Oh, 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 my goodness. Drama, drama city. Um, it's like... Oh dear. Really? Um, I, I, I hesitate. I'm kind of holding back to be honest with you because I, I just really want to kind of absorb this energy first. Um, this is like to really start the reading off with this. And by the way, we're, we're going to expand out into subtopics, you know, for those of you who want to click ahead and really hone down into, um, the subjects of romance and relationships, career and money, health and healing. We're going to get to that. But this is just general overarching energies as I'm talking to you about the astrology. Um, looks to me like you're trying to maybe disconnect from some drama in your life. And it might have to do with friends, um, people that you like colleagues or people that you socialize with. And I am seeing that there is a really fast moving energy having to do with a fire sign, female, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The good news is it seems like from this fallout, you get some brand new beginning, okay? But I think it stresses you out. I ain't gonna lie. And I think you're gonna work on it, okay? You're definitely gonna work on this issue. Um, I'm seeing three females here, so I'm seeing it, so, you know, it could be sisters, it could be daughters, um, and sometimes this fire sign, yeah, it could be a person, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius again, but it can also represent a move. I don't really see you move, and this could be a new home for some of you, and that could be, you know, leaving a location, all right, um, Honestly, though, I mean, you don't have a lot of energy supporting a move, so it might be somebody around you is moving this year. Um, I, I'm going to, as we get into this reading, we'll see if this comes up again and where it's going, okay? Because if I look at the astrology specific to you, I don't see support for you getting a new house or moving this year. Um, but I do see that uh, maybe it's somebody around you. It could be a friend, somebody you work with. But I don't think it's you, okay? We'll find out. So let, let me move on and talk about the astrology. Um, I think the main focus for you this year is, um, well, let's say coming into this year, you are coming to an end of a major cycle that's ended back in 2008 with Pluto and Capricorn in your seventh house. So you've already been through a lot of really intense transformation. Like you've been through some tower moments having to do with marriage, relationships. The past 14 years have been very, very life-changing for you in that respect. But there will be a, a shift over the next two years towards Pluto going into Aquarius in your eighth house and that's bringing intense transformation having to do with your relationship with others, again, but on an emotional, sexual, financial level, having to do with sharing and your private life and facing your own mortality um, and issues with, you know, facing your shadow self, okay? Which I know you're, you're already dealing with some of that right now because of Saturn being in your eighth house. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But I'm just saying this is kind of like another layer here where 
the last 14 years have not been easy, okay? And you're closing that difficult time period out in terms of marriage and a long-term committed partnerships. For some of you, even business agreements, okay? Business partnerships and contracts and things like that. Um, and you're coming into a whole new Pluto cycle, okay? Um, I mean, it's still, Cap Pluto and Capricorn is still going to be in your seventh house this year. But, you know, you're, you're finishing up that work over the next two years. So um, your main focus this year is going to have to do with um, 11th and 10th houses. Okay, when starting off this year, you know, the first half of this year, very focused on all things Aquarian, which is 11th house, which could be, it could be an actual Aquarian, um, you know, has, has, is somehow on your radar, or it could just be, you know, things having to do with friend groups, socializing, which I saw there. People that you work with, your colleagues, um, people that you network with. Um, it could even be online social media. So I think that this is a year where, you know, you're going to, if you want, well, I should say, if you're, you're going to have some kind of focus on gathering with people, hopefully in a way that profer, prospers you. There might be a Scorpio that is relevant here. I think that if these relationships are not prospering you in some respect, and I'm not necessarily saying monetarily, but yeah, that could be part of it. Um, if they're not helping you to get ahead in life, whatever that means for you, well, you could be cutting things off with these people or cutting them out of your life, you know. I think that later on in this year, when uh, the North Node slips back into your 10th house, you know, the second half of the year, that's going to make you really focused on your career, your status. And, you know, these, these issues of balancing your, your family life with your um, professional life, your, you know, balancing your public life with your private life, that's really going to be a um, big focus for you, especially the second half of this year. And coming into this year, the focus is a lot on maybe children and friends and getting out there and socializing and having fun and all of that. With that uh, north node going retrograde in your 10th house from April onward, it is bringing change, which might be, might be a new job that comes with more responsibilities. I do have to warn you, however, that, um, you know, if you get a new job with more responsibilities, there could be some kind of problems initially with that or a feeling of discontent. Um, maybe with your current line of work that pushes you to do something new and something different and take on something more, okay? It, it could be born out of this discontent that you're having with your current work. And for others of you, yeah, you might be challenged with your current work um, this year, but um, you're just going to keep working through it and you're going to hold on to your confidence. I do have to warn you, though, if you are discontent with your job, and you're trying to air any of those concerns, be aware because there could be problems that come up from that coming from coworkers who are maybe working against you or people, uh, superiors who are not agreeing with you. And that could result in you quitting a job again, making way for some kind of separation here and you getting a new path with your, your work. So, my advice with this energy is to plan ahead. If you can see a scenario like this playing out, oof. Um, start lining up other opportunities or be very proactive pr to prevent this misfortune prior to this transit, okay? I'm getting here a lot of responsibilities. It has to do with responsibility. So again, it's almost like, are they expecting too much out of you? Did you overextend yourself? Did you agree? Um, to more than you can handle and and i'm getting some kind of resistance going on with that so you know if you want to stay with this job you're going to have to probably tough it out um and i think that if you do tough it out over time you will be acknowledged for your hard work and your perseverance and your diligence but you got to be aware that the pressure of this career focus you know, the, these responsibilities and the pressure that they're putting on that fourth house, is, that home family issues with your family life is going to also be quite significant. So try to balance your professional life out with your private life is, is really the advice. Now, where are you getting the good luck and fortune this year? Where would you get the easy breaks? It will be with your ninth and eighth houses. 
uh, might not see it though. You got a lot of options and opportunities though um, when it comes to, you know, ninth house would have to do with higher learning. Like if you're a student or um, if you are doing long distance travel, a lot of opportunities there. I think with Jupiter in the ninth house, you know, again, if you're looking for love or you're looking for work, your easy breaks are going to be found in higher learning, spirituality, long distance travel, publishing, foreigners, or people who are very different. You know, they come from a foreign culture or language or something like that. But it is during the first half of this year, while Jupiter is in Pisces in your ninth house, very spiritual energy, uh, which makes you very philosophical in the ninth house. And it gives you a great ability to learn new things, which again, good time for you to learn new things, but just make sure that whatever you're learning is benefiting your career and your status goals. Um, wow, 10 of Pentacles in reverse and two of cups, okay? So, I'm seeing an energy here of there being um, maybe during this time, the first half of the year that I was talking to you about, um, don't let your ambitions ruin relationships. And this could be relationships with family, friends, somebody that you do have an emotional connection to, okay? You, you have some kind of care for them. But again, the responsibilities and the burdens um, if things are not put in check properly, it could it could really uh, ruin relationships. And I'm also seeing um, beware of any kind of fam fighting within a family or um, for some of you. We're going to get into money and find out. But yeah, there might be foreclosure. And again, I don't know that this is necessarily happening with you. But I did see something maybe for somebody around you is... Um, moving, getting new housing because there's been a fallout with previous housing and this could be foreclosure. Maybe they're losing their home. Um, maybe somebody, again, somebody that you definitely have an emotional connection with. I'm very sorry to hear that, but I'm seeing that first half of the year popping up in the cards. Um, but going back, you know, to you um, taking on any kind of um, learning opportunities that are going to benefit your status and career, um, really good time to do it because eventually, <laughs> I'm going to take those that are in the upright, eventually, you know, Jupiter is going to move into your 10th house next when it gets out of ninth, and that's going to be really great for your career. Well, now I'm seeing possibly the influence of a Capricorn and possibly a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio here with the moon. But I'm, you know, definitely Pisces or Cancer here, okay? I, I'm not liking it, okay? Really not liking it. And because this is indicating to me uh, some toxicity around emotions. And there's some kind of bondage going on. And it might be hidden. It might be a very private matter. Very private matter that somebody feels... I'm a, I just feel like I really opened something up there. Let me let me keep going and we'll see if it comes out in, in the other readings. Um, well, all right, I'm nosy like this, so I'm going to do it. What is this? Oh, okay. Childish, warning in reverse, ruthless, lust. So what I'm getting from this is, um, well, it might involve a child again or somebody acting very childish. And somebody's not heeding warnings. Having to do with lust. And I don't know about that, that ruthless energy. That's ruthless, okay? Oh, where is this dependent? This, uh, this just fell off the side. Um, this is either a, a child or this might involve, um, again, family fighting and money, it, fighting about money within a family like generational, it, it could go, you know, three generations deep, all right, but you have an emotional connection, I think this could be family members, all right, and somebody here is feeling maybe tied to family over financial issues and there might be a lot of fears and insecurities about that that come up first half of the year now in april when venus um joins jupiter and pisces it's 
going to be a really powerful time to get blessing in relationships. Really powerful. And Jupiter and Aries is going to be in your eighth house the last half of the year. Huh, Queen of Swords, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. A um, lot of opportunities for growth coming in the second half of the year in terms of work. And it's bringing expansion to eighth house matters having to do with shared resources, taxes, um, other people's money, sex, intimacy. Might again be an air sign or just an energy of somebody who's very much like, I know what I need to do. You know, we're going to cut through this shit and we're going to do what needs to be done, logically speaking. This is an energy of a woman. A lot of times Queen of Swords is a divorcee. You know, this is a woman who doesn't take shit off of people. She's going to tell you like it is. She's going to tell you how the cow ate the cabbage, you know. And, it, it, you know, she's just, the problem is she just, she's been through a lot. She's been through a lot. And she's just a no-nonsense person. It is what it is. So beware of that. I don't know if that's your energy or, again, it could be a family member. Um, now, the challenges that you have for this year are Saturn in the 8th house. So, um, this, look, I, I've talked about this on my channel. I've got some videos about Saturn transits on my spiritual playlist. Um, I, I mean, listen, this transit is not a joke. My heart goes out to anybody going through it. Um, you know, this no, nobody likes Saturn going through any house, but this is probably the hardest house for Saturn to go through. And it brings about this somewhat of an existential crisis, okay, where you are considering the meaning of life and the point of it all. Like, what is the point of all of this? There's a princess of wands. So, uh, again, I'm getting a fire sign possibly. It could be a child, someone under 30, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or somebody who's very young at heart, might be older than that, might not even be a child. Um, if this is not a person, it is just an energy of somebody um, kind of restless, really restless and putting themselves out there. Okay, maybe having, hey, there we go with the family again, Ten of Cups. Um, marriage and family, you might know this person through marriage and family, or there's just this really restless energy about going after your ideals. And I see that somehow as I'm seeing two people here, and there's two people there, but um, there's something about marriage, family, ideals, whatever is your happily ever after. Some of you may be putting out an application uh, during this time of the year, um, going after your dream job, okay? Um, going after what you know deep down you really want and is right and fitting for you. But again, going back to this, you know, Saturn in the eighth house, um, you're having to answer to debts during a transit like this. And yes, considering issues of generational wealth, which I saw coming up there. And shared resources. And it could be that someone in the family during this time, they suffer a significant loss. It could be that a distant relative passes. I'm sorry to say, I'm not predicting anybody here is dying, right? But in some way, you are, um, you, you know, you're putting your attention on these issues of life after death. And it, it's making you consider your own mortality. You might find yourself watching like more um, videos on YouTube having to do with near-death experiences or just um, getting into more uh, philosophy at this time. Um, I am sorry to say, well, we're going to look at what the um, relationships and romance cards have to say about it. But just given this transit, I can almost predict sex and intimacy is probably going to be in the crapper. I I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Okay, or there's some kind of restriction on you getting the sex life you want and the intimacy, the, the deep intimacy that you really desire. There's some kind of restriction or limitation on that. This could also be a time when secrets and skeletons that are in the closet are coming out and you're having to address them. My advice during this transit, um, well, my gosh, come to me for a private reading, and I don't say that to just anybody, okay? I can really have compassion for this transit, all right, in a way that most people cannot. I, 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 I exquisitely understand the pain of this transit. If you, if I'm resonating with you and what I'm saying, come get a private reading with me, okay? I would love to help you. 
Um, but this is a time when you have to face your debts and clear them if at all possible. You've got to re-examine where you've been in life, where you're at, where you're going. Try to do the shadow work. Try to do a soul detox. Yeah, I do offer, by the way, healing readings. Very good time to do that type of spiritual work and just purge whatever needs to be purged from your life. Where was that? Yeah. This is the energy here, this kind of Pluto, Scorpionic, uh, eighth house, you know, like get rid of the toxicity, whatever this is. I didn't mean to go this deep with these cards, but, you know, apparently Spirit wanted us to. I can't promise you, you know, love reading is going to be that deep. We'll see when we get to it. But, um, you know, there are probably going to be times with this Saturn transit where, you know, which is all throughout this year, okay, where you're feeling like what's being asked of you is too much or too, unre you know, it's it's unreasonable. It's not fair. And, um, you know, I went through that. I had people coming after me to pay for debts that I owed because other people who owed me money didn't pay me. And when that happened, I mean, it was brutal because nobody cared. Nobody cared that I was owed money, and that's why I owed people money. Nobody cared that I had a court order that wasn't honored or being enforced. Nobody cared. Excuse my French. I gotta like bleep that out. <laughs> okay. Um, and that forced me, I will say the positive is that it forced me to start um, talking to people and negotiating and, and, and surprisingly, I will say the good news is it turned out better than I could have imagined. And during that time, I started learning how to uh, repair and restore my credit. And I got back in good standing with people that I owed money to. And um, and now from that time frame, I mean, I've got good credit. I've got, you know, a really good situation. I've been able to accomplish so much more because I faced down that demon and I'm seeing this demon here. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing restriction with money. And yeah, it might have to do with, you know, family matters, okay? But do the work and, you know, Saturn is going to reward you. Um, what Saturn is trying to do is to set the bar higher, is to, to, you know, challenge you to come up higher in your standards and your expectations of yourself in relationship to others and regardless of others. This is about getting you to um, mature and have more resilience in these eighth house matters. So at the foundation, we have the Knight of Cups. So some of you maybe have idealized this. I mean, that's your energy there and there. Maybe you have idealized these matters. Um, um, or this year, you're, you're trying to be kind of ide idealistic in your approach. But you got some sober things going on. And... Um, and I think that it could be a slow and steady mosey on through kind of pace. All right. Let's move on to relationships and romance and let's see what comes up for you. I think the best time for you to find a life partner, if you're looking for one, is going to be in August or after August, I should say. And it could be with somebody who you already know. Um, somebody who that who you're becoming more open with this year um, might be with a friend, okay? Or you're turning um, a friend into something more than that. Just be aware of trust issues getting in the way of, you know, it, all kinds of relationships this year. And particularly with Mars and Gemini during um, the month of August, okay? And then in October, November, I think that you have the greatest chance for romance. Some of you, though, I see focus on, you know, your career, your generational wealth. Um, some of you really focus on self-love or, again, you know, you're dealing with people who are in that mind frame. But I think this is mostly your energy. Now, if you're single, January can bring some mismatches. I mean, for a lot of us, right? We're all dealing with... Um, Venus retrograde and Capricorn. So just generally speaking, January is not a good month. And I think that some of you are probably during January, if you're single and trying to date somebody, you're maybe trying to um, shake things up and get a new beginning in some respect. But perhaps having trouble with this because, I'll put that over here for now, because uh, there might be disagreements, okay, or an unwillingness to take a risk. And I, I just see generally in January, a lot of people are very going to be very risk adverse, very withdrawn, very much reevaluating what they value. So 
I think you will have a better chance in February and March. You have a better chance of finding what you want in terms of commitment. And then again, you know, if you don't find it in February or March, you, you have a better chance again at the end of the year, getting into October, November, like I said, and even August, as early as August. Now, if you're coupled, January is going to bring an opportunity for you to strengthen a bond that you already have. And this will be after reviewing and making adjustments to a relationship. And even, you know, re reassessing your needs versus theirs. Again, you might realize that the two of you are not on the same page, okay? Um, and you need to come up with some kind of win-win solution to really get expansion. I see some of you, though, if you're coupled during this time frame in January, you're thinking back, you know, to better days. You are nostalgic. Some of you, I hate to say, looking, looking outside the relationship because something has maybe gotten lackluster here having to do with a commitment, maybe with a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And I think that, um, you know, there's kind of a practical tone here to the energy of, I mean, the cards are telling me that, you know, you're wanting to spice things up in your life and heat things up the way they used to be. Oh yeah, some of you do want to get a new beginning, a new commitment. Some of you, maybe, yeah, you're looking outside. Uh, some of you, if, you know, those of you who are coupled, I'm seeing an energy of, if it's not you, it's the other person getting, uh, thinking that things are getting maybe a little bit dull, wanting to spice things up, getting a new union outside of the partnership. I'm sorry to tell you that's, I gotta say it like it is. Okay, that's what the cards are telling me. Now, by October, November, I think things are gonna calm down and be more relaxed, um, but, I feel I'm even though there's this practical air about you know January with Venus being retrograde in Capricorn, I do feel that what what is being evaluated on a real practical level is you know I want some excitement in my life, you know I want passion, I want warmth <laughs> yeah. This is very sexual energy. <laughs> this is very sexual energy. Okay. So, um, you know, with this Venus retrograde going and, you know, impacting your seventh house, yeah, it could be very challenging until March um, if you are trying to find or renew a commitment. So use this as a learning experience for yourself. If some, you or somebody else is having wandering eyes in a relationship, or you're looking at getting commitment and expansion in a new union, regardless of whether or not you're single, right? Like, look at who's drawing you in, who's attracting you, because it's telling you something pretty significant about your values at this point in time and, and what needs you need to work on getting met for this entire year. Now, Mars is also going to go conjunct here in the seventh house with Venus, by the way, during this time. So it's really pushing you to see what heart-based relationships feel like or even passion you know and you putting the work into making these connections happen between yourself and others or at least you know opening yourself up to making it possible for that to enter into your life and so consider during this time the relationships that are you know adding or taking away from what you really want desire value and this might reveal to you that there's some hidden enemies or there's a need to reestablish or maintain better boundaries with others. Oh, yeah. You're, you're going to realize you don't want to put the work into somebody. Somebody is realizing, look, I, I don't want to I don't want to invest in this anymore. And it might be coming from a place of this is not even what I want anymore or I don't even think I'm going to get what I want out of this. So what's the use? Okay. Some of you might have an enemy or an ex resurface from the past, and that could be bring the opportunity for you to bring some kind of peace and closure. It's going to be really key for you this year to step into that empathic ability you have and become this peacemaker. Oh my gosh, here we go, seven of, of swords. So uh, be aware of, you know, cheating, lying, okay? And I'm particularly seeing this with the couples where somebody's looking outside of the partnership and wants to get a new beginning with someone else. There might be some sneaking around, okay? As early as January is what I'm getting off of the, these cards, all right? Um, or what I'm seeing here is there's unequal give and take. 
and somebody's like, you know what, I'm not putting it on this because I'm not getting back what I want. You know, I'm, there's not reciprocation here. And if you are dealing with somebody who's not putting the work in the relationship and you are and you're trying to figure out why, I get this feeling like they're holding back information. They have their reasons. They're just not being upfront with you about it. If things are not lining up for you, I'm going to say, you know, romantically in January, the best use of this is to focus more on your career and what you value with that. I'll say that, okay? Um, January 8th through the 30th, you could be very seductive. But again, I'm seeing that if you are a partner, be wary, be aware of the temptation to cheat. I am seeing someone here tempted to cheat, and I'm seeing it with the astrology as well. And if there is any cheating going on right here, it will probably come out in February when Venus gets out of retrograde. I don't think you're going to be able to keep this, under, or they're not going to be able to keep this under wraps for very long. Well, here we go. Talking about that in February. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing the... Um, <laughs> What is it saying that chickens come home to roost about, you know, somebody being discontent in a relationship and going after their happiness to try to, you know, find the balance of what they were, you know, privately, secretly um, not happy about. And I, I can see that something is going to happen. It's, you know, if, if there's cheating going on, that is revealed in February. It's like spirit is like, look, we need to get this out on the table, get this out in the open. You know, you can't keep on with this sneaking around, lying, cheating, whatever. Who's doing, whoever's doing that, whoever's not giving a fair exchange, reciprocating. I'm hearing dishonor. Hidden dishonor is what I'm hearing. Okay. Spirit is, this is major arcana spirit stepping in saying, uh, no, hold up. Wait a second. We got to stop that nonsense. It's okay for you to be happy, but you're going to have to go after manifesting happy with integrity. Getting into March 2nd through the 6th, there is going to be a major stellium with Mars, Pluto, Venus, and Capricorn and Aquarius. So if you are looking for love, it's going to help you find it. Well, there we go. Ten of Chalices could find attachment with somebody, but again, this might have to do with, you know, a marriage and family issue coming up, okay? Okay. Mid-April is going to be a big game changer if you're having trouble in an existing relationship. So I really see what the Ten of Chalice is. Somebody's going after their ideals. Somebody's going after their happily ever after. Now, later on, you know, in late June, July, um, there's, I think it's June, actually, there's going to be a triple, no, late July, early August. Sorry, I got my dates wrong. There's going to be a triple conjunction with Uranus, Mars, and the North Node in your 11th house. Again, you know, this Aquarian type stuff coming up again. So there could be some challenges with your friends, your social life, your professional networks, possibly colleagues. And there's probably some stress that's going to come up during that time. Um, a lot of pressure may be put on you to, again, be the peacemaker that you can totally be. If you just put that hat on, you can do it. Um, but prepare yourself because, yes, could be a lot, a lot of drama coming up. And, right, it might not be your drama, not your circus, not your monkey, right? But um, it's it's in your periphery somehow, and it goes back to this, right? <laughs> there it goes with that tower. There's some kind of fallout. Something not built on a solid foundation, maybe because it wasn't built out of integrity. It's got a weak foundation because there was not honesty there. There was not agreement. There were hidden motives, hidden um, loyalties. Um, and so whatever this fallout is, um, just be prepared, okay? If it is in your private life, it might become a very public matter. I'm telling you, I'm giving you warning. And, and this is some, you know, healthy dose of warning, Okay. If this is you, Cancer, right, because I think that sometimes I've noticed like the cancer, you know, the Cancerians sometimes like to keep things under wraps, you know, they, you know, for emotional security, they don't like feeling, you know, their private stuff out in the open, but I'm really getting a vibe even there with that 10, you know, and the 10 over the public, 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 my gosh, especially in late July, early August. So if you know what this is about with the Seven of Swords and that tower, 
I'm giving you fair warning. Deal with it now on your own terms. Don't wait for, don't wait for spirit to step in with that tower card. Because that's when spirit is like, look, we told you not to build from that. You kept building. You know, this is like a lie that just kind of snowballs and gets out of control. And, and, and spirit kept telling you the whole time, don't keep doing it. Don't keep doing it. And you kept doing it. And then finally spirit steps in and like, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> uh, it could be rude. All right. Again, might not be you. It's somebody around you. Um, a friend, a family member, perhaps. Um, so yeah, if you're in a position to be the peacemaker, please do that, you know, but go easy on yourself. I even if, let's say you, you know, that's not your drama. Okay. Um, you could even go hard on yourself because of your empathic abilities. You then feel guilty because, you know, you're having an easier time of it than others. So, um, use those empathic abilities to heal. Don't be a sponge. Don't soak up all that negative, toxic energy try to transform it right and i saw that toxicity showing up in the general don't be a conduit for that okay don't just don't pass that along don't soak it up uh, get it out get it out all right now in october there's going to be a saturn you're in a square in your 11th house so that might again cause some issues that started to fester in august late July, early August, okay? And yes, it could be the same BS, new day, right? Same song, different verse. Um, but use this to clear, use this time to clear up any um, misunderstandings and resolve any infighting, maybe that there have been, you know, within a family or within teams that you work with, you know, with um, that have been causing disharmony and disunity. You've got a tremendous, um, ability to be a healer okay and a protector and a nurturer but you're going to have to harness that energy and use it really effectively during this time nine of pentacles uh, might have to do with um you being self-sufficient and getting attention getting attention for that some of you, you you know on the love front i'm gonna say that um towards the end of this year um there's this air of independence, even if you're in a marriage family relationship. So I think if things have been a bit topsy-turvy for you, you're going to come out looking really self-sufficient. And that is going to give you a lot of respect. I mean, people are noticing that, okay? Um, now, for those of you who, again, are single and, you know, you are looking for, you know, marriage and family or, or some really high level of attachment and commitment with someone. It could be that you're getting attention from a single woman or, again, if you are the single woman, you're getting a lot of attention here. For some of you, you know, this is like on, on social media and regardless if it's online or offline, you are being seen as somebody who is a winner. So that's looking really good. Let's move on to career and money. This is a year where I think that you're going to find your inner authority. If you haven't already, you're really going to boss up to a higher level than before. And if your life is a mess, you know, because of Saturn in the 8th house, well, you're going to straighten it out. You're going to take dominion over that, okay? Some of you um, with the Two of Pentacles, well, might be between two locations, might be going from, you know, if this is like a business location, you might be transferring to another location within the company. Or perhaps your your location is moving, the, the office space is moving. Some of you may be working more from home if you're not already doing that or working more in the office or something about two things here and there's some kind of change, need for change and adaptation going on. Um, but I think you know, back to the astrology overall this year that, you know, as you straighten out whatever's been crooked or you smooth out whatever's been rough in your life, um, people are going to notice that about you and they're going to look up to you as they watch, you know, your witness, they watch your um, example, I should say. And then they're going to start looking at you as a person that they need to go to in times of support. And trouble 
Well, we've got the Empress in reverse. So, you know, there is a concern here about a feminine energy. Um, might have to do with home and family being a bit upside down or some kind of domestic disharmony. Um, again, maybe because you're putting so much focus on your career, it is putting your your home life at some kind of a detriment where it's gotten out of balance. Remember I said earlier this year, your north node, the second half of this year will be in the 10th house, which puts your south node in your in the fourth house. So again, you got to balance this, you know, professional life versus home life. And I feel like something is out of whack with that um, at this point in time, or you're not getting the growth with something. I'm going to say that, okay? You're not getting the growth in some respect. But again, going back to the astrology this year, I think that overall, um, you know, you put that hard work out there and that kind of went that way. What the heck is that about? If you put the hard work in, you're going you're going to attract people in. They're going to see your example and they're going to be drawn to you and want to do business with you. And I think that it is a year that you're going to have a lot of, of ideas. Um, you're just brimming with ideas that are going to bring professional growth and hopefully put this in the upright. And I'm going to say astrologically, you want to put that upright where you're getting growth. If there is a creative block, you're going to have to brainstorm. You're going to have to or get around. Uh, I'm hearing a mastermind type of group where you can plug into other people and brainstorm together to get some creative ideas so that you yeah get out of this, whatever that blockage is, okay, with, with the growth. Now, with the Queen of Pentacles showing up, well, it kind of came out sideways, didn't it? So it could be a Taurus, Virgo, or a Capricorn is relevant. But this is an energy of, you know, really having more of a down-to-earth, practical approach. I don't know why I'm seeing her looking at her over there like, um, if there is a creative block, it's maybe because you're not looking at what's practical and down-to-earth here. You are um, maybe looking at the changes that need to be made or what's not stable, you know, and you're trying to balance something out, but you're not looking at the practicalities and the brass tacks of things, right? Because this isn't too sexy now, is it? You know, um, it, in the reverse, let's let me let me say, you know, if we want to read it that way, because it kind of arguably maybe came out sort of that way. Just be aware of, you know, how you're spending your money and not being an emotional spender. Um, right. You know, like buying creature comforts, uh, uh, redoing retail therapy. You know what I'm saying? Or trying to buy access and influence with money, using money to manipulate. All right, I'm going to put this back over here. And we're just going to say you're going to turn that around, whatever that is. Okay. Um, but <sighs> Knave of Wands in reverse. Not a fan. Two of Swords. Not a fan. Listen, if you're stuck and you're at a stalemate uh, this year about anything, it, it might have to do with somebody arguing there's some kind of conflict somebody's unwilling to listen very impulsive okay a very impatient type of energy so again i'm going to say that if you want to because this is some stuck energy here of not getting growth and things being stagnant you want to turn things around not only do you have to be practical and down to earth and look at what's stable and secure but you're going to have to also um, you know, open yourself up to listening and working through any kind of uh, communication struggles that you're having this year. Now, financially, I'm going to say if you're going to have any gains this year, it's probably going to be May through October, then again in December. February, July, and August are also favorable, but um, probably the greatest financial gains will come to you May through October and December. If you own a business, this is a really good time, a good year for you to get expansion, especially if you're trying to reach a global or long distance audience. And if you're an employee, it is very possible that you're going to get more opportunities to relocate. I told you right there in the cards. Um, and whatever this new location is, if it's a new branch, um, or headquarters is moving and giving you the opportunity to move to another place 
maybe and I don't know for some of you might go to another state okay I don't know why that's being brought to my mind you know you got a lot of companies that are up and leaving California and New York and they're going to Texas Florida to get some tax relief so you might you know if you're in one of those areas where you are with a company a, a global corporation who's saying you know we want to move our headquarters to a different state um, you're free to join us let me tell you it would be a very boss move for you to go on and take them up on that offer okay um, this location is going to be very favorable for you and it's very likely that you're going to find appreciation among the people that you work with at that location and it's very likely as well that you're going to be able to turn some of those co-worker relationships into an even deeper bond where you become friends outside of work very awesome might be a taurus that is relevant to some of you um, others of you you are making some commitments you're committing yourself to some kind of beliefs okay actually what i'm getting intuitively off that card is that you're gonna decide to stay committed to this job okay like you might decide oh that's gonna add more responsibility burden to me to take that go move off to that new location might be a longer drive might be moving expenses i don't know you fill in the blank but you commit yourself to stick with that company despite the added responsibilities and stress that it's going to bring. And I think in the end, it's going to turn out positive for you. It's like a, it's going to pay you back. OK, you're going to get a payback for, you know, sticking with it. And, yeah, there is a very good chance that you could get promoted to higher pay and or a position, you know, higher level of position, bringing more responsibility and authority in the first half of this year. But it could also happen in the second half of this year. But um, less of a boost financially in the second half of this year. Whatever you're offered, like I'm just going to say if you're offered um, a promotion or pay raise the first half of the year and you think you can just kind of like hold out for more money later that they're going to get more desperate and offer you more later, don't. Don't. Just jump on it, okay? <laughs> jump on it when, while you can in the first half of the year if it's out there. Now, if you are looking for a job this year, I think that you're going to probably do best with that after May. Um, and what I'm getting with this is that, um, oh, okay, you're going to have to come up with some new strategy in the way you're looking for employment, okay? Uh, and it might be with the Seven of Pentacles in reverse, next to the Seven of Swords in reverse, that what you've invested in, it just doesn't work anymore, um, right? We're dealing with a lot of change going on. A lot of, um, a lot of jobs are becoming obsolete, are becoming... Um, you know, uh, taken over by robots, AI, okay, so some of you are having to rethink maybe a profession, some of you, um, if it's not that, it's just simply like you're not on fire about that work anymore, you're burned out, some of you, you're just not into it, you don't have a passion for that work anymore, um, so you got to work on repairing whatever this is, you know, um, Five of Swords, um, Maybe it could also be that you're not in agreement with the direction that, that they're wanting to take this industry or this position. You don't like the way things are going, um, and there's just some lack of agreement about it. So you're going to have to come up with some either new line of work or um, <clears throat> a new approach to doing that work. Something is going to have to change for you to break free of being out of a job. If you are out of a job this year, you're going to have to come up with a whole new strategy. And, you know, that might involve you getting some uh, additional skills, you know, to bolster your resume, maybe invest in, in some kind of additional uh, professional training to bolster that resume. If you're a student, um, you know, it's really important this year that you have a plan and you work the plan. Otherwise, there will be distractions that come up for sure. And if without the plan, you, you're going to get derailed quite easily. And mid-year, you may want to switch schools. And again, I'm going to go back to this Two of Pentacles, going from one school to another school. Um, and again, it's kind of the same as I said with the career people, that if you make that switch, it's probably going to benefit you over the long term. And by the end of the year, um, you're probably going to do very well on finals, so long as you stay focused. But like I said before, that's going to be a challenge. That's why you need to start this year with a plan and work the plan. With the Queen of Chalices, could be a female friend that's helping you out. Um, could be a Cancer Scorpio Pisces, but I see a lot of support coming in um, from a friend if, you know, you're a student. 
Now, you know, back to general money, because I kind of got a little bit off track there, um, talking about, you know, students and uh, employees and blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to say overall, regardless of whatever your status is in life, employed, self-employed, student, blah, 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 you know, uh, um, passive income is something that you want to hone in on over the long term, you know, like getting getting into investments, getting um, into you know, looking at generational wealth, and that came up before in the general with that Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Um, it is likely that you're going to get a lot of increase, financial increase, by focusing your attention on developing passive income over the long term. Just try during this year to avoid unnecessary purchases. If you have any disposable income this year, the best possible use of it is to try to aggressively acquire more assets, such as real estate, stocks, crypto, or stockpiling. Um, and February, by the way, could be you know a time when you can buy low and later sell high. I have a sneaking suspicion that um, some stocks and cryptos will be clearance priced in February because of the U.S. going through that Pluto return. If you want to know more about it, make sure you watch my 2022 astrological forecast that I already have out. Five of Chalice I just see some disappointment and regrets here, okay? And again, it might go back to family issues. Um, and, you know, if that's being brought to your mind in February, um, I think the higher purpose of that is, you know, how can you transform this? How can you heal this cancer? Um, it looks like you will have some good financial news come in, though that knave of pentacles and it might have to do with an earth sign child towards virgo capricorn or someone under 30 but i think generally this is a financial opportunity or offer coming in some of you good money news okay really good money news coming in um but again it might be an investment opportunity where um you're being presented with an, an idea somebody's communicating hey i just saw that you know the price has dropped on this stock or this crypto. And if you buy in now, man, this could really pay off later on. And so only advice here is um, be really careful to research whatever you're investing or whatever you're doing, because it is possible that someone you're talking to that's coming in with this, this money idea or, or opportunity, um, you might trust them, but it might lead you to take a big loss on something. So really do your homework. Um, real estate investing could be really good for you this year, but again, do your homework because there's always, always, right, bad opportunities, you know, even like people who are real estate investors, they put a lot of research into properties before they invest in them. So do the research, but otherwise I see that, yeah, maybe selling things off at a higher rate, like you could buy in low in February, but you could sell it high by as early as mid August, where you're seeing some growth here. King of Wands, Tor um, Fire Sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Might be, you know, um, a boss, might be work in the, you know, fields of communications, marketing, or just that type of work. But I, I'm, I'm again concerned, I'm getting some energies here, like I saw with Aries, of somebody not listening to their intuition with that knave of wands in reverse, and now we got the king of wands in reverse. Uh, somebody really impulsive, self-interested, not willing to listen, and um, not, not, they're either not paying attention to their intuition or they're just flat ignoring it. They're refusing to do what they know they should be doing. Um, so again, I think it's a warning. Do not make any impulsive um, decisions. I can see distractions possibly coming up this year, um, and that might be an energy there that is distracting you. It might be a fire sign in your midst, um, or somebody that comes off really hot-headed and off the cuff, you know. And that, whatever the distractions are, could cause you to really um, lose momentum with your career, or even if you're a student, it lose track with your studies. I think the first half of this year, um, your personal life looks like it's gonna go fairly smooth. Um, but after June, there could be some challenges that come up. And I can see that, you know, with there's communication problems um, that I've kind of mentioned all along and a disagreement here. Yeah. So, and, and by the way, you know, it, it's as we get closer into the second half of this year, um, late July, August, 
it's a general energy get ready for it it's not necessarily having anything to do with you it's just a collective thing but i do see it showing up in your reading so be aware of um communication issues coming up and know that when they come up it's temporary over time things will stabilize and they'll slowly improve but obviously you using those empathic abilities is going to help smooth that out even faster um, Ten of Wands in reverse. Well, I think that you're going to decide that you need to drop some burdens, okay, this year. Um, you know, if, if you take on too much, be careful. I can see you getting burned out. Or somebody around here, maybe a boss, is burned out. Um, and it could also be that somebody needs to figure out how to be a better delegator. Um, but it could also be that somebody's avoiding responsibility as well. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to say, you know, going back to January, make sure you start off this year using that Venus retrograde energy to your advantage by evaluating your finances, setting up very ambitious goals that are probably going to be best achieved by setting smaller goals throughout the year, things that are achievable attainable okay like don't bite off more than you can chew because i'm seeing a risk of that here and did i not see that card showing up uh over yeah there it is don't bite off more than you can chew okay um look into smart goals okay setting smart goals that's an acronym um standing for specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound make sure yeah in january when you're setting those goals don't don't you know don't set goals for yourself that are just not realistic i guess is what i'm saying to you okay try to pace yourself um right don't just you know get really specific okay um say uh, you know this is my goal here's my objective and here are the tasks that i'm gonna do right you have a goal over the year and then, you know, you have tasks daily. There's the stars card has to do with, you know, these Aquarian things, these 11th house matters. Maybe an Aquarian, maybe friends, socializing, colleagues. I do feel, though, that by the end of this year, you are going to get some kind of acknowledgement, okay, with your ambitions. You're going to get some kind of recognition for all the responsibilities that you've taken on. Difficult as I see they have been. Okay, you're going to get some payoff. The cards are saying it. The astrology is saying it. But back to this goal setting, uh, some of y'all might want to stay on track by, you know, getting a day planner, getting, you know, dry erase boards, and then making sure that you wake up every morning and you're looking at that. That vision is set before you, okay? So you're, you're staying on track with your goals. All right, I'm going to take the ones that are upright. That's a lot. And I'm, by the way, I, I take my own advice, okay? I've got, I've got dry erase boards. I've got, you know, my day planners and all of that. So let's see. Yeah, you are going to break free of some limitations here this year. Um, and again, I'm seeing it. It might have to do with communication problems and going through a very difficult time in your life where you were not getting the victory. There wasn't clarity. There might have been some lies. There might have been lack of ag agreement here. And that's why there was a breakdown um, in with your life or with the communications. Yet you're getting free of this. You're seeing your way out of it. You're loosening up that bondage. Now, by mid-May... I think that's when you're going to start to see the payoff for that hard work, okay? Um, as, you know, assuming that you've made the right moves and you are listening to spirit and you are following spirit's guidance, um, I see it really starting to pay off um, by mid-May. And, and the even better news is that, um, and yeah, that's showing right there, things are going to start to go smoother for you, Knight of Chalices. Um the even better news for you is that this payoff that you're getting, the, you know, the, the acknowledgement that you're getting um, is, is a cycle that is lasting into May of next year. So wonderful. Whatever prosperity comes your way around May, expect that to last for the following year into May of 2023 and make the most of it. At the foundation, 
Knight of Swords, decisive action, okay? Um, we got a lot of knights here, all right? And pages, there's a lot of people around you. I don't know if y'all are working with a lot of people, but, um, you know, and, and let me say that I don't really see personally you moving. I don't even have that in the cards. So again, <sighs> There's a move going on. I think it has to do with a family member or a friend. Some of you, this is about uh, moving locations uh, with your work. All right. But I do not see, um, we, could write, we, we didn't get the night in there that would have indicated you moving house. I think that Ace of Pentacles that y'all had come out for you is a new beginning with your, maybe with your work. Or with family, which is right online with the, the placement of the nodes. Let's get some financial advice for cancer. I'm feeling this. Clean energy food. Dreams of abundance. Well, this is a nice little segue into, um, you know, talking about health and healing. Because where I was going to talk to you about this. About, you know, doing better with your diet. Okay, so let's hold on to this. But I think this is about, you know, what you're eating. What you're consuming. And I do feel that some of you are being given some divine downloads this year, particularly through your dream activity, where spirit is showing you something or giving you some kind of valuable insight that is helping you to manifest your dreams into reality. But you do need to focus on fueling up your body with healthy, you know, nutrient dense foods, superfoods. They're going to help you to be um, more energetic and have better ideas. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are dealing with gut issues, leaky gut, and probably I'm going to be talking about that on this channel um, in the coming year. But I did you know, with so many people dealing with leaky gut issue, it impacts your cognitive abilities. It impacts your ability to think and, you know, come up with ideas that are really, you know, going to transform things in your life positively. And to communicate in a way that transforms relationships positively. So it's all connected. I mean, um, I'm really seeing here that there is a need for you to um, clean up your diet and um, pay attention to the dream activity. Now, let me see with a health and healing segment if there's anything else, you know, that comes up again. Um, be careful this year about minor injuries, particularly if you are involved in any kind of physical physical sporting activities. Could be a very high risk of that. But it's unlikely that you're going to have any major illnesses or injuries this year. Of course, you got to look at, you know, your unique natal chart. Um, you know, look at the sixth house, what's going on in there, or anything having to do with Virgo energies. Um, but I think generally speaking, this is um, the health concerns this year for you are you being more conscientious about it and having a more controlled diet where you um, get rid of any kind of food sensitivities. You know, um, by the way, there's there are tests that you can, um, you know, at home tests that you can do to figure out um if you have any food sensitivities, and that's something that myself and my family have embarked upon over the last year, year and a half, and it's been amazing. You know, we did an at-home test for food sensitivities, and the results that came back were kind of shocking. And once we started removing those foods from our diet, my God, you know, it was just like breakthrough. So again, health is wealth. I've been saying that, you know, so that's Aries. I'm going to say it to you. Um Clean up that diet, get more controlled, um, start excluding foods that you're sensitive to. And that might start with you getting an at-home food sensitivity test. Doing this is going to really positively um, add to the efforts that you're putting out there in your relationships and with your work. Now, I will say that in April, if there are any kind of existing health problems, they're probably likely going to start improving by April and then in June with a new moon in Cancer. That's very helpful for you finding more emotional harmony, doing the emotional healing. And then with the added presence of Jupiter and Aries, it's going to give you heightened intuition. And then with the sun in Cancer on June 21st, a boost to your vitality and your confidence. So that's really nice. Darkening of the light. Some of you are going to have to maintain a low profile. Look inward first. Caution and moderation. 
This is about difficulty, self-protection, and subduing your brilliance. You know, what came to my mind as I was reading that is um, Saturn in that eighth house. So, um, right, it's about dealing with these shadow aspects of ourselves. And this is some emotional healing work that probably needs to be done. And will probably be best done in June with all of that cancer energy that is really coming in to support you. And then finally in August, we've got Mars in Gemini until January 2023. So, yes, this could be very emotionally challenging. Uh, take care of your emotions. Try not to store these um, negative emotional energies in your emotional body. You got to find some kind of healthy outlet. You know, cry it out. <laughs> cry it out if you have to. Um, and I'm seeing increase here. Okay. So this is good. Like this again about eighth house sharing. Um, and, it, you know, but it's also about you getting, I'm seeing abundance here as well, of you reaping rewards. There being overflow, expansion, flowering, encouragement, fertile ground, and abundance. You might not feel that way coming into this year, you know, early on, because I saw that Empress in reverse was kind of, you know, making you feel a little whatever. But I'm getting this feeling, this vibe, like, you know, if you're dealing with that energy earlier this year, you dig deep within your inner reserves, and then what comes out of it is a new strategy. Maybe a friend helps you with that. And then you start getting new offers, new opportunities. You start breaking free of the limitations. And you start um, putting down burdens. And, you know, again, getting finally some appreciation for all the work that you've done to overcome maybe a difficult time in your life. And, you know, I saw that as well, that you're, you're closing out the year with you're going to be acknowledged. Whether we're talking about love or money, it's happening. And I'm seeing independence here, okay? So if, you know, um, you're going through difficulties where you got to kind of lay low by the end of this year, you start um, being very self-sufficient. Because I think you stop putting your, your work into things that are just not, or effort into things that are just not paying off. And you start realizing um, what you value and really committing yourself to what you value. So that brings the increase. I hope this reading has blessed you. Please know that I'm wishing you all the best for 2022. And until next time, be blessed.